Okay, so here we are with Oakdale Middle School and talking about CAMI, the social studies teachers, and how we might be able to use that in our continuity of learning instruction. So I am going to share my, I'm going to share a link with you first that I think is going to be really helpful to you that is what I predicted questions that you might ask. And I stuck them all in this document so that hopefully, um, hey, Rick, I see your question there. Do we open Cami from Google Drive or our computer? We're going to go all through that. So don't worry. And then this document that I just sent out to you over chat is uh, Cami links to share. So it's just things that, you know, like, for example, if you don't have the Google Meet grid view and you want to see everybody's face instead of just one person who's talking, you can go and download that, that extension. The Cami extension's there. There's also a little screen capture tool that you can install as well. I have the link to Cami on the Hub, which is where all we're putting all of these instructional technology resources. So you can go and look out information there. If you don't have any PDFs prepared and ready to go, I put some just generic organizers from Nat Geo that are useful to everybody. Uh, they're uploaded to Drive, so you can grab them and use those if you don't have anything. Um, Owen was working on a Martin Luther bio PDF. So that's timely and relevant. That's linked in there. I don't know that you really want to join in my Google Classroom, but when we get to sharing that, if that's the case, you can. And then there's these um, bottom links are YouTube videos that I just found, like I had to watch them once because they were done so well. And Cami such a nice, straightforward program that um, it, was, it was not hard to, to do to learn with those. Um, and then the OCR and split and merge and Cami and students, if you're using Google Classroom. So those are all linked into that document. So a lot of really useful stuff there. Uh, maybe that will derail any questions that you had to start and you can just go right there and, and get them answered. Okay, so I am going to first show you um, how to deal with Drive and Cami because I think that's going to be a pretty um, common, um, you know, just way to access it, I'm going to say. So let me go ahead and share my desktop with you. And don't be frightened. I've got a ton of stuff open, but it will be okay. So let's see, it's taking a second for everything to shift over for me. But hopefully you are seeing my drive and now I can't see you. It's very slow. Okay, now I can see you. Do you see my drive? You can just shake your head. You don't see my drive. Maybe somebody can unmute and let me know if you see my drive now. Yes. Okay, awesome. All right. So don't mind me. I'm just going to um, navigate through to some Hold resources on. for us. Hold on, Heather. I'm having like a, <laughs> my computer is literally like having a seizure. It's not allowing, it's not popping up on my end. I don't know why. I don't see it either. Um, you can always hop back out. Is that yeah. cat? Just just leave the meat and then come back okay. and see if that doesn't solve it for okay. you. Oh, I see. And then I'm trying to remember where I was going to get to something I meant to have pulled up already. Okay, so I am just going to pull up. Is that cat? Is it better? I'm opening a PDF. 
And these are all of these organizers that I downloaded from Nat Geo. As everybody hopefully can see that. And then the top center, open with, if you have Kami installed and if you are logged into Kami, then you will see this annotate with Kami. And if I choose that, then what happens is now I have this document that is opened from Drive as a PDF in Kami. And I am, sorry, I'm gonna move you guys over here so I can have a look at you while I'm working too because it really helps if I can see you shake your head and stuff like that. So if I'm looking like this, I'm actually looking at you, but I'm not, I'm looking away from my camera. Okay. So everybody can see the PDF on the, on my screen that I'm sharing now, right? Okay. Awesome. We are in money. Okay. So across the top, we are in teacher and EDU account. So that is, um, we were actually able to purchase this and I think we have it, next year if i'm not mistaken so this this was a purchase that the county was able to make and we've been trying to push it for a long time so this is here this isn't just a a covid 19 pandemic uh, free tool to be using um, this uh, tool toggle sidebar that's all it will do for you you can move the um, sidebar over and what it does is it just shows you all of the pages so there's like 17 pages of a pdf in here so you don't um, it's an easy way to jump around if you want to. You can go and find in document if you, it has that control F feature, if you know something for sure you're trying to look for. Uh, here you can get close out of that. You just click on it again to get rid of it. You can go um, straight to Google Drive with Kami. It will let you know that this is what the name of it is that you've gotten your file from Google Drive. I'm moving over the top Here's your zoom in and zoom out feature. You can uh, open another file. And if you click on that, you can see you can open from your computer and you can also open from Google. It generates this Kami file right in your Google Drive. Or you can navigate to another place and it will have recent files that you've opened for you here. This is a share document or share this document link out. And Alex and I were just messing around with this right before and what you would do is after you have your document all marked up and annotated and all set to go then you can share it out with this link what it's going to ask you to do is basically um, give your permissions it's the sharing link the annotations and the permissions and then it's a cami app link that you actually share out to the students Okay, so you go get it from Drive, you put it in Kami, you do all your annotation work in Kami, and then you can share it out with all of those annotations through Kami. Does that make sense? Okay, awesome. Um, here uh, you can print. You also have a save feature and you can save that right into your Google Drive Kami folder or you can upload it somewhere else or you can download it somewhere else too. So it has all of those features for you. Here's your download and then, excuse me, <coughs> I'm kind of wondered how this was going to go because I honestly haven't been doing a lot of talk in the last month or so. It's been in really short spurts if it has been. <laughs> So um, here's your help center. And then the next thing that I wanna really spend any amount of time in is this menu item. Um, anytime you see those three lines over the top of each other, you can have fun with the kids and call it the hamburger because it kind of is an official term that you can use in the technology world. So you click on the hamburger and what you get over there is the menu. And there's a couple of really cool tools in here that I wanna make sure that you guys know about. And one is this split and merge document. And I know like if, I know Alex, you're involved in the um, print packets for middle school. You know, that's been a, you know, a big project with trying to print and merge and PDF and everything. So like this is, will be really helpful to that process if any of you are involved in that. But all you do is you just click on the split and merge and it will process it. And I'm gonna go ahead and see if I, my other window's already open. Um, it will produce a new tab for you and then you can see all of my pages of PDF are just all listed and I can scroll across and then I can say well I want this first page here and then I want this organized here and that those are the only two organizers I want and then you can save that and work with that with your um, students so that's really 
a nice feature. Um, and then back in that menu, again, the hamburger on the right hand side, this um, second thing right down here, which is probably one of the most important aspects of Kami is that it will take any PDF and turn it into an OCR document, which is optical, optical as in like eye and then character recognition. Because a PDF is read like an image. There's no um, de definition between any of the letters. And an OCR PDF provides all that definition between the letters. So then it can do text to speech and it can identify words and it can do all of those um, tools that like read, write, extension um, needs OCR to work. So if you are putting any PDFs out on your Schoology or through Google Classroom or anything like that, then you have to make sure that you scan it as a, or you make this OCR function, run it through this and all that's gonna happen. If I click that, it'll say um, upload file and share link to enable needs to be removed. Okay, so you can, oh, so you have to remove the upload first and then come back and try it again. And then it gives this message here down at the bottom that see down here at the very bottom, it just says um, OCR is complete. Okay, so then you have this file that is um, 508 compliant and you can put up on any of your um, learning management platforms that you're using. And then you would share that one after you ran the OCR, right? And any of my ACT team members, if you have anything to add to that, please feel free to, to step in and add. But I think it's just as simple as that. You share out that one and then you have this OCR PDF. For my brain and my mind, I like to add in that, uh, you know, the title, maybe this is cause and effect organizer, I'll put OCR and then it'll be labeled PDF. So I just know immediately in the title that I already transferred that into an OCR, OCR file, okay? So in menu, um, there's a couple other things I just wanna um, share with you. If you are a classroom user, you can create an assignment right from Kami in Google Classroom. You can jump, go to last page or jump around to specific pages. Um, you, if you accidentally got rid of your annotations, you can restore them again, or if you need to rotate your um, page in um, Kami at all, you can set it to view one page at a time or two page at a time. And this is kind of cool too. It has a presentation mode. So if you want to use this, um, if we ever get to the synchronous class where you can present to a number of different students at a time, if you find you're really liking Kami and the way that you can offer information, you can present in this and that just wipes away all the tools for you. And then there's a hide comment in your undo button down here. So that, I mean, there's your menu, but I think the two uh, really useful ones are split and merge and an OCR for scan documents and PDFs, okay? So then, see here, I'm touching my face. I'm trying really hard as a new practice of mine in general not to touch my face, but I'm almost catching myself before I do it now. It's kind of like as I do it. So you can count how many times I touch my face during the presentation. Now I'm going to move all the way over to the left-hand side, and that is your toolbar. So, you know, think of your hamburger on the right-hand side as your menu items, and then you come over here to the left-hand side, and that's your toolbar. And if you're not that minded and you want your toolbar to show up on the other side, down at the very bottom is the toggle so that you can make your, I see everybody's head going back and forth. That was kind of funny. <laughs> um, Sorry, the top here, your select text. It gives you three different options. This um, is your regular arrow cursor that will allow you to get hold of objects that you have on the page, like shapes or annotations, anything that you've ordered um, to be added to the page. Do I have any people who a long time ago were active Inspire users, right? So it's not gonna be a whole lot different from that um, because then you choose your, um, cursor to the hand tool and what that does is that will you know move your document around but if you're trying to move your document around and you have the select tool it's it's not going to work okay but if you have OCR you can now select just effect and then any of these other tools down here if you wanted to make it go text-to-speech or choose your dictionary on it 
um, if it has a word for effect, it would show up for us. So um, that's what the OCR will do for you inside Kami too. So your select tool, your hand tool moves the pages around and select annotations. This is a really cool one that I'll show you once we get into adding annotations because once you put an annotation on a page, when you go to select tool and choose this select annotations, then you can actually grab the annotation and move it around to a different place. So that could be really helpful for you too. Um, dictionary just is that if you have you know some words that are really needy to be looked up. We don't really have any. Let me see if I can get conclude. There you go. So conclusions, because this is an OCR document, it's able to read that and understand it and provide a definition for it. Okay. Same with text to speech. You guys aren't going to be able to hear any of this because it's all happening in my ears and my headphones, but it will um, just read out whatever you had highlighted and then you can do previous sentence, next sentence. You can have that read over and over again. You can have the whole page read, stop the reading. Um, you have some voice control and some speed control. So some nice text to speech information in there. Markup, now there's you know pretty good powerful stuff in here. You have your um, highlighter. So if you want to make sure that you're, you know, you can do it with a uh, text or you can do a box so you could say you know I want to make sure that you guys get this whole area filled out and you can choose the color that you want it to be um, you can come down to this um, little art padlet and then these are your default colors if you don't if you're never ever going to highlight in black then you can change it out to a different color and then save it and then those will be the colors on your palette and your three most used colors are always going to show up here you've got strike through and underline which can be really helpful with with feedback and communication with students and i'm going to skip over this comment one really here right here because what's really my favorite one. And I think the one that you're gonna find be your favorite too. So I'll just wanna show you that it also allows you to do text boxes, right? You can change the font size and the text box that you're using. And then you've got some color variations. If any of you ever have to use any math or equations, there's this whole uh, symbol area that you can choose from. There's some music notes in there too. So a lot of cool equation symbols in there. You can get into drawing if you want. It's a little bit crazy because you have to use your mouse and I'm not really super good at it. If you have um, a touchscreen Chromebook, that's a whole lot easier to use that, that function. A stylus makes it even even easier. You can add in your any of your shapes that you want to add in. You've got an eraser so I can get rid of what I just drew. Um, you can add in images if you want to go pull up a file from your computer or a file from Drive. Um, you know, that's a really, I was just talking with, with Owen with his Martin Luther King bio. You know, if that's not a, a very, if it's very text heavy and there aren't a lot of images, you can have students go out and find a related image and have them insert it into the text where it makes comprehension more accessible. So there's a lot of, of fun things that you can do with image on here. And then there's also uh, a signature feature too. So I am, uh, can you hear my dog barking? It's fun stuff working at home sometimes. So if any of you have a timesheet that you need to turn in, you can get your signature uploaded here. I recommend you draw a signature on a phone because again, you can use your finger to do the signature. So if you click on draw a signature on phone, I hit this email me the link and then my patience wore out. It didn't come to me soon enough. So I copied the link and sent it to myself to in my own email instead of waiting for them to email it to me. And then you can just upload your signature. And then, you know, like when here I have a, a couple, I just messed around. I found that if you sign at the very top of the space that's given to you, it's just kind of easier to um, put it into your document because then you don't have like a bunch of white space above your document and you're trying to get it on the line. So um, it's just a little, a little hint for you there. So yeah, that's really a, kind of a just life skill fun thing to know about so i want to come back here to 
a different page. If I can find the one that I need. Aha, this one. So I went in and I was just messing around and adding the text boxes in for my name and period. I put a signature in there too. See, this is when I figured out, oh yes, the top of the box definitely works better. Um, uh, when you click on the box here, I can, I can grab it to move it around if I want or um, rotate it or trash it right from there. Okay. Um, this was just, a, a, you know, if I come over here and I go to select this tool, then I can move these annotations around if it's not quite in the right place. The hand tool is going to move the whole page with all the annotations on it. And then this select annotations is going to allow me to come over and, gra and grab these and then be able to edit them if I wanted to change anything about those annotations. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the select tool. Now here in um, markup, you know, highlighter, pen, we went through all of that. Comment is where we want to go. So you have the ability to add in a text comment. Okay. So if I can come in and I can just put a click on here and then I have this dot that shows up and I can change whatever color I want it to. Pretty cool. And then it's associated over here to this text comment and I can come over and I can type a comment and then hit return and then it shows up there. But the other thing that's really cool is this little microphone over here. Woo like could make feedback really, really, really easy. A lot of it with your students that's targeted and relevant because I can click on this and then I can speak feedback directly related to whatever is in the document. Click on it one more time. And uh, I mean, I think it translates pretty well. It hasn't gotten too wonky on me. And so I think that is super cool. And that is in the text comment where you can type or voice comment. And then we have this voice comment where you come in and you put some another dot on here. And then what pops up for you is this recording. So it's more like an audio file than a typing file so it's not going to be read it's only going to be accessed by listening okay and um, it works here you just hit record and um, I'm not going to do it because it's not going to be able to play back but you can see it's like just jumping all over the place because it's picking up my voice on the mic ready to go and record okay and then we have a video comment so you can come down and let me see I'm gonna do it up top here dot in there one second I'm trying to find out why it's not giving me there we go I don't oh see now I'm gonna get like eight <laughs> and when it starts for you it is recording okay so like hit the uh, video comment and then like be ready to go because it starts recording like I'm recording right now and then I just hit done and then that is in there attached again to the little wherever the dot is that you placed within the document okay and then this last one is a screen capture and with that And it's just take it a moment. Here we go. I can tell you, I can speak to you the basic difference with the video capture. It's the video is of me talking, right? With the screen capture, it is of your desktop and whatever you're doing on that. So if you wanted to show them a feature or a function or a, somewhere that they needed to go or something that they needed to do within Kami, then it would allow you to do that as a screen capture. And I did that at some point and it's all covered up. Here's an image, an insert image. You just have to go and find it when you have your image right here and then you can adjust it to however big you want it to be. And then you can add any kind of comment to go along with it too. So that's a lot of information. We went over Drive, Schoology, and Classroom integration. 
and you guys seem to be pretty pretty good with that. No questions. Um, then we talked about the menu, which is the hamburger over on the right hand side, and that's where you have your split and merge and your OCR, right? And, the, and then a couple other things, but those are the two really, really handy ones. And then you move back over to the left-hand side if you want your toolbar to be there. You have your couple of different select tools. Now that we have a bunch of annotations on here, if we come down here and select annotations, see, then you can do multiple of them, and then you can um, edit the actual annotation itself if you want it to be different from how you originally placed it on the page. And then all of these other cool things with the, once you do OCR with a dictionary and text-to-speech, and then you can mark up any super, super powers are here in the comment area with your voice typing and your comment text typing and your videoing and your audio filing to the students on their work. You can add your text boxes in there, fun equations. If you wanna get brave and do some drawing with your mouse, I'm really terrible at it. You can add in shapes, you can get rid of your stuff, your image there and your signature down at the bottom. And we can at 10.30, ooh, that was pretty good timing. I was hoping it would be 30 minutes. We can turn on our microphones one at a time or you guys can go into the chat. I'm gonna move you back over so you're in front of me so I can look at you. And we can talk through chat if you guys wanna try and do some work on your PDFs right now while everybody's here. And if you have a question, then everybody's right there. Um, Kat, did you figure out with the Google Drive symbol, once you download it, you have to leave and come back and then yeah. your um, Meet extension will be activated? Yes. And so do the kids have access to Cami? Yes. Okay, so, and, but do they, they don't know how to use it yet. Right. Okay. So we would need to send out like a little like, hey, here's how you access this if you need the document read to you type thing. Oh, yeah. So let me show you. Um, I just have, have this sand. Can you see my desktop? Yes. If, if you go in to create and then you do can't, And give it a second. You see this little box in the lower right? It says send CAMI instructions to yes. students. So it will automatically send out some CAMI instructions to the students. But I also grabbed the those instructions and and put them in this Cami links to share. Which I believe is this right here. I can, let me chat it out for you one more time. Yep. Nope, that's in Google Classroom. Student instructions for using Cami, this one right here. Okay. I'm gonna stick that in chat for you. Okay, perfect, yeah. thank you. Hey Heather, is there a way to see um, what Cami, what this document would look like from a student perspective? Um, the one that I have all marked up. Yeah. Let me. I can share that out with you. Okay. Let me share this here really quick, and then I'll share that next. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Good question. Okay, and then let me go back to the one that's all marked up. Um, okay, do you see the one that's all marked up? I don't see you guys, so you can tell me yes or no. <laughs> I'm gonna go up to the top and I'm gonna Maybe over here so I can see you. I can't, I can't teach without seeing. 
Okay, so there's a share link up in the very top blue bar on the right hand side. And if I grab that, now this app, Cami app link is what is going to have all of the information. So we're going to have anyone with the link can an annotate it or you can turn it off if you don't want the students to be able to annotate that anymore. Um, share my annotations with collaborators or not. Um, so I can say that the students don't have it, but that collaborators do. And then if, whether you have permission to download and print the file or not, okay? So then I go and I grab this, and then I'm gonna come back over here to meet and chat this Cami link, Cami doc link. I'm gonna call it Cami PDF link. And then you can get in and look at that. Mindy, how would you suggest you label a map? Um, I'm going to let your kids be the one that gives you the most direction on that, you know, because you could label it with um, text boxes or you can label it with audio boxes or you can label it with the voice typing. So there's a ton of suggestions there. All of the words or communication bits are going to be off to the side of the document. The only thing that's going to show up on the document would be those dots or those circles. Okay. Heather, when I click on the link, I'm getting a message that says it's no longer shared. Well, what if I... <clears throat> oh, here it comes. It must yep. need to process. Well, and I also changed um, anyone with the link can annotate. I put that back on. So that might be the sharing link itself. So you can't have it on without annotations. Okay. Um, oh, Karen, you're very welcome. Let's see, Amy says, OCR is essential for it to work with the read and write extension for Google Chrome to interact with PDS. Yeah, so basically, even if you're not using Cami for anything at all, but you're using a PDF with students, if you don't put it through that OCR quick process, then anybody who needs to use read, write won't be able to utilize it on that PDF that you posted for them. And yes, Cami is available for next year as well. Thanks for that, Amy. So Heather, when you, this is Kat, so when you put a PDF, like a document through uh, OCR and Cami, you share that link into the document. So then when they click on that link, it's OCR. Yes, you can, you can either share it by the link or you can take that um, document after you've run it through OCR and save it and choose to save it to Drive and then you can share it out from Drive. Okay. Just like you, and then you would save it out through Drive just like a normal PDF, but they would have the ability through Cami now to do the read write. Yeah, well, it, actually, it's the, the PDF that's been changed too. Okay. So when they open that PDF, how do they get it to do the read write for them? Like, do they have to be in the Cami app or do they have to, or can they just start highlighting it and it reads for them? So they would have to open the uh, three possible ways. Okay. The first possible way would be for you to have it in Drive and for them to access it from Drive. Okay. Right? So they would open up the PDF that's OCR and then they would go in the top center and do open with Cami annotation or annotate with Cami, something like that. Okay. All right. And then the second way to do it is if you're in Google Classroom and I've got my uh, screen up. Um, you go and you do, let me exit out of this really quick. You hit create and that's Cami assignment right away, okay. right there, okay? And when you hit Cami assignment, then it, your dialog box comes up and you go through and choose your PDF from Drive that you're gonna use. Okay. Okay, and this is the one that allows you to just attach with a little check mark, send the, the instructions to students too. It's in that Cami um, links to share document that I shared out with you at the very beginning. It's also on the hub too. All of this stuff is on the Cami page on the hub. Okay, so you would just fill all of that out as normal and then Got it, thanks. When you open up that assignment, mm -hmm. you can see um, 
here's the PDF via Cami. And it's so you, you don't, there's no choosing up here. It just is open with Cami. So they don't have the other choices because you've assigned it to them through Cami in okay. Classroom. Okay. And you can now, Schoology too, that way. Yep. That's just a little bit different process. Um, let me go back to my sandbox course here in Schoology. Yeah, I kind of skipped all the way over this at the beginning. I'm sorry. I got too excited. So in Schoology, you'll just go to add materials and then choose assignment. And this should have shown up for you guys a couple of days ago. So add assignment. And then in that dialog box, there's a little cami button right in there. And then I'll show you the one super cool thing using it through Schoology. So you name it, you give it the description you want, and here's your, instead of Google, just Google Drive assignments, now you have a little cami button here too, right? So when you hit that, I think it's gonna take forever. Please try again. So this is why whenever you're doing a webinar, you go through and you do everything that you need to do first and you leave all of the tabs open so that if anything fails you in the webinar, maybe you can go back to the tab that you had opened. Um, okay, so what I did here is I have this, I want this to go away. Let me see here. I'm gonna hit cancel. All right. So this assignment that I put on Schoology assigned from Cami Test. Um, this just exactly the way that I showed you. Um, you have the PDF here when the when you open the assignment, and then you also have this open assignment with Cami. So it's not a direct step. It's not as direct as in class as in Schoology as classroom, but pretty pretty easy. So I assigned it by navigating to Drive with that assigned by Cami, and then when I open the assignment, I can open the PDF or I can go straight to Cami and open it. So now I've opened Cami with the PDF that I want to be using through Schoology, and it's saved in Drive. Okay, so there's a lot going on, but because of all of those connections, mm -hmm. I come in here and I fill out my organizer and you see up here in the upper right hand corner, it's not just save anymore because it went through Schoology, the students can actually turn straight back in from Cami when you're dealing with Schoology. That's like the Schoology turn in button. Does that make sense? Yeah. So they would turn it in through Cami, mm -hmm. but, that would, but that would turn it into Schoology. Saved on through Drive. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of a really nice mashup right there. All right. Let me see your other questions or ask them out loud. You guys are being very respectful. I love it. So I was asking Heather, like, so what if I have a document that I've created and I've hyperlinked a scanned PDF already? And so I just want to send out the document through Schoology, like the, the worksheet or whatever. Um, but I have hidden there, like the hyperlinked PDF. How do I make sure that PDF is OCR for like my mod kids? Do I still have to so, stop thing through Cami? Yeah, I mean, um, Amy might be able to add a little bit more insight to this, but the only way I've been able to figure out if a PDF is OCR or not is to put it into Cami. If it's not OCR, it will automatically recommend that you make it one right away. Okay. If it is OCR, you just don't see that. Is that correct, Amy? Yes, uh, we were just talking about this on our team the other day. The best way to try it is to test it. If you uh -huh. bring it into Cami or even the Read Write Extension PDF Reader, and it can't read the text, then it's um, it's it's not an OCR PDF. And it typically, like Cami and Read Write PDF Reader, it will prompt you that it is not an OCR PDF, and it will 
typically let you know. So I would, I've been telling teachers to test them out before sending them in either Cami or rewrite to, to test that functionality so they know what to anticipate from the student view. Okay. Yeah. It would be nice if we could just see somehow, if they, if they would just be named a little bit differently, like it was PDF OCR or something, you know, automatic, but I don't, there, I don't think there's anything like that. Okay. Any other questions? So Heather, just to clarify, when you turn in through Cami, does it go turn it in directly through Schoology or is there a certain place within Schoology you have to look for those assignments? So I don't have any kids turning anything into me, so I don't know yet. We okay. Figure we'll that have, one out. All right, we'll play yeah. with that. Yeah, so I just turned it in and we were unable to turn in this file. This may be because you are a teacher in this course. Yeah, so I can't I can't turn it in because I'm the teacher and it doesn't know where to put my turned in stuff. But if any of you guys want to get into my class and my course in Schoology as a student, um, we can totally troubleshoot that. Heather, you can add me as a student. I'd love to try that with you. Okay, all right. That's Amy speaking. Yes, I know. <laughs> Some voices I know, it's kind of weird. All right, if you guys have any other questions, you can let them fly. If you want to work, you can let, you can work. Um, Alex, what are, what are your um, designs on team meeting? Did you have a department meeting? Um, we don't, we don't really need to meet after this. I just wanted to give them time to, um, learn about Cami and then, uh, find a PDF document that they could, uh, play around with and possibly use for one of their lessons. Do any of you guys, any of you folks, any of y'all, you're not all guys, have any other questions for me on this? Amy, I'm trying to get you added in as a member. It's just all super slow. I will. No problem. Can you add um, Cheryl LeBoy as well? She's my teammate. You can, can you email me how to spell her name? I will. Oh, wait, no, I see. It's very easy. Yes, I can add her. Heather, I'm piggybacking on this call. Could you add me too, please? Is that was Mike Brown? Mike, yeah. Yep, I will add you guys into my Schoology course for sure. Let questions fly if you got them while I'm here. Thank you, Heather. I'm going to have pop off. This was really helpful. I appreciate it. You're very welcome, Amy. Thanks for being here and clarifying some of those details for us. No problem. I hope we were quiet enough for you. We just sat and listened. <laughs> you guys are great. You're invited anytime. Thank, Thank you. you. Heather, did you record this webinar and it, is it possible to share it? Because I think it was so well done. It would be great to be able to share it with other colleagues. Hey, yeah, actually, you just reminded me that I'm still recording. Hmm. So, yes, that is the um, goal here. So I'm going to come down and say thank you all very much for being part of this recording. I went to my lower right hand three dots and my toolbar that shows up and now I'm going to hit stop recording. <laughs>